Hello, friends. I'm doing a study here in regards to the book of Galatians. It's one of the most controversial, in some respects, books in the New Testament. It has been, in many respects, maligned and misunderstood. And it brings up the concept of, of grace, law and grace. And essentially, the Apostle Paul had a very difficult task of dealing with the, the Galatians, who were essentially pagan people in their philosophy and in their religious concepts, but also he had the difficult task of also dealing with the Jews who come from a, a, a background uh, that he was also commensurate with and uh, in terms of the Old Testament scriptures. And their paradigm, of course, was very strong in that one must obey the law. And there were many who insisted that Christianity must be observed in the context of the law of Moses and all of those things associated with the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, were still binding upon Christians and that Christians must be circumcised and that Christians must, must satisfy all of those Old Testament laws and commandments, of course. And the, the book of Galatians addresses that, but it also addresses the fact that there were those who were criticizing Christians who were in effect actually following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles in that they didn't stop following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, but that the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, magnifies and explains all of those Old Testament understandings. All of the precepts and judgments of the Old Testament are made clear through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means his Sabbath and his holy days and those other things that he did and that he observed and that the first, second, and third century church continued to observe were still in effect. And Paul had a difficult task in sort of like walking the fence in some respects to speak to both of his different audiences. And so it has been somewhat maligned and misunderstood. I want to speak to some of those issues today. And th the concept of grace, of course, comes into play. But before I really tackle that, I just want to read a few verses here in the very beginning of the book of Galatians to illustrate the way Paul really starts his discourse here because it is quite apparent that Paul addresses something that was happening then and continues even now to still happen today. And Paul makes it clear here in chapter 1 of his amazement. He was astonished at how soon things were changing and how soon the clear simple teachings of Jesus Christ and Paul and the others were being twisted. And Paul even uses the word perverted. The teachings were being perverted. And he begins here at verse 6. He says, I marvel. In other words, I'm amazed that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So the concept of grace was being perverted and another gospel was being preached. Now that's somewhat of a, a hard concept to get our minds around. You mean to tell me that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be incorrectly preached? Well, yes, that's what Paul is addressing here. It was happening. And of course, the Lord and Paul and Peter and John and the others all prophesied that that would indeed happen. So I submit to you that somewhere extant in the world today, there has to be a Christianity that follows this definition that Paul was talking about, or Paul didn't know what he was talking about. And neither did the Lord, of course, because he said it would happen. In fact, he said, many would come in my name, admitting that I am the Messiah. Many would come saying that I am indeed Yeshua HaMashiach, God the Word, the Savior. And yet at the end of their message, the many would be deceived. But Paul goes on here, he says, that there are those perverting the gospel, preaching something else, which is not another, but one that troubles us and one that is perverse. And he goes on at some length to, to talk about that. And from there, I want to take you over to what we're told in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 2, we're told this, beginning at verse 8. For by grace, now let's define grace. Grace, according to the dictionary, is the unmerited pardon, the unearned, unwarranted, undeserved, free, gracious, magnanimous pardon that one cannot earn. It is a free gift, undeserved gift, except by God's largesse, unattainable by no other means. For by grace are you saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And the word faith is very important here because this book makes it clear that it's not only the faith in Jesus Christ, but the faith of Jesus Christ as practiced by Jesus Christ and the church that he founded. And he goes on here. He says, by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the construction of that sentence is very clever because it really references the fact that the grace is a gift, the faith is a gift, and all of it is the gift of God, the largesse of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But listen to this. That's not the end of it. He goes on. And this is usually left out. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now the Kini Greek, which is the common Greek understanding, educated Greek, has a, a more significant understanding. Let me read it to you that way. For we are his workmanship, being created, as it were. It's an ongoing condition, an ongoing happening in us. New creatures in Christ being created daily. For we are his workmanship, being created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Well, this word works is the key, of course. And in the Greek, it is ergo. And it literally means the, the behavior, the works of life, the strife of life, the stuff of life, the things of life, the things that we must work through in life, the behaviors as portrayed for us in the Sermon on the Mount by the example of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he shows us to be his works and the works that we are to follow. There are those who say that there are all kinds of works involved with Christianity. There's from one extreme to the other, unmerited pardon with nothing required of us, or all kinds of do's and don'ts. There are those who say, well, you gotta have uh, six or seven laps around the rosary and so many Hail Marys and so much of this and so much of that. That by definition is salvation by works. But this book teaches something quite different, that salvation is indeed the gift of God, the gracious, unmerited, unwarranted gift of God, but that in having received that gift, we are respected, uh, expected then to walk in the good works that the Lord Jesus Christ provides for us. Those things that would mimic his life and his behaviors and the things that he has given to us. This book of Galatians that we have prepared, prepared for you is a commentary on the book. And it, it is very helpful in understanding what the Apostle Paul was getting at. And I'd like to offer it to you. You can click on our website at cgi.org, or you can see that right here below me uh, on your TV screens to click on the line for this booklet, the book of Galatians and get a, a commentary that will help you uh, to understand this concept of grace and works. Yes, there are works required. There are things required of us. You cannot earn your salvation. It is the free gift of God. You don't earn it by overcoming. You don't earn it by, by baptism. You don't earn it by, your, by anything that you do. It is the gift of God. We must understand that. But very clearly there is a, a mindset, there is a behavior, there is an attitude that we are to attain to. All the way at the end of your Bible in the book of Revelation, the Apostle Paul make, or the Apostle John rather makes it clear that the, the patience of the saints, the hupone of the saints, the, be, the behavior of the saints, the continued observance of the saints is the keeping of his commandments and the example and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, let me again remind you to send in for this book, to ask for this book. Uh, click on our website at cgi.org and ask for the book, the book of Galatians, a commentary on the book of Galatians. And as always, as we sign off on these programs, once again, I will just tell you friends to keep on the armor of God. Spend time in this word. This is indeed the armor of God. Put it all on. Put on the helmet, the breastplate, all of it, that you might be able to stand in this evil day because there is extent in the world a, a gospel that the Apostle Paul says is perverse. Another gospel, a different Jesus, something that is counterfeit. So I submit to you, if you keep that armor on, you go a long way towards discerning the true gospel. Mm.